Hello, my name is Mark Gooden, and I'm a CFD engineer with Simutech Group. I'd like to share with you today, at an overview level, how to use ANSYS Computational Fluid Dynamics CFD software in the design of your device. The example I've chosen is an arterial blood filter. This device is intended to remove small particles that may be introduced into the blood during open heart surgery. Two topics that I'll be covering, which often arise with these types of cardiovascular devices, is how to account for the effects of blood's non-Newtonian viscosity and how to determine the impact of the filter design, which we'll be modeling as a porous media, on the blood flow. The project we're undertaking is to develop a new design for an arterial blood filter. We have an initially proposed design and want to determine how well it performs. We're also looking for insight into design changes that can improve the performance of this device. Our key performance parameters are to provide uniform flow across the membrane to improve its efficiency, to minimize areas of recirculating flow or stagnant flow where blood clots can form, and to understand the influence of blood's non-Newtonian viscosity on the flow distribution throughout the device. Blood is composed of about 45% red blood cells by volume. So unless you're modeling very small flow passages, similar in size to a red blood cell, 6 to 8 microns in diameter, we typically assume that the blood can be represented as a homogeneous fluid where we account for the overall effects of the red blood cells on the blood's properties. So for blood, its viscosity increases or thickens as it moves more slowly. For this filter, there may be regions where this effect could be important. For the initial configuration, we've chosen a cylindrical design. The model is composed of three sections. We have an intersection shown in red, the filter representing the porous media in the middle in green, and the outer region in blue which collects and returns the blood to the outlet port. The red arrows in the cross-sectional image on the right show the general direction of the blood as it passes through the device, coming in through the center, flowing out through the filter, and being collected and passing out through the blood outlet. We will be using the ANSYS CFD software, which leverages the ANSYS Workbench overall platform. The components I'm using include space claim for creating the flow path geometry, or you can also import your CAD model, the new watertight workflow in fluent meshing, fluent to provide the CFD solution, and ANSYS CFD POST to post-process and visualize the flow field results. I think a CFD POST is where you can bring your solutions to life. You're exploring and sharing what you've discovered with your project teams or customers, and you're revealing what direction to take when making changes to improve your designs. This is the Workbench project page, which is used to connect the different analysis components. I really like the project page. It's easy to see how everything is interconnected. As shown on the left-hand side, there are many different analysis systems to choose from, with the individual component systems listed below. For this model, I'm showing a space claim geometry component linked to several different fluent with fluent meshing components. These are in turn linked to several different results or CFD post components. I use this modular approach to evaluate several diff different fluid solutions, a baseline model, a model where I included porous media, next model up where I had porous media and my non-Newtonian blood viscosity, and finally the porous media, non-Newtonian, and now adding in residence time. Residence time is very helpful in identifying stagnant flow regions where blood could potentially clot. For today's discussion, I'll focus on a few key aspects of setting up the filter model, and then showing the final results, including the porous media, blood non-Newtonian viscosity effects, and the residence time results. So let's open up the software and get started. So we'll open up Workbench as a shortcut I've created. I then go to File and select the file that I just recently completed. This is the model, again, remember, that has the complete porous media non-Newtonian residence time simulation. We're going to double click on the space claim geometry component. This is space claim, which shows, again, that the three different volumes that we've created. We have our our inner fluid path, we have our porous re media region in, in the middle, and we have the outer fluid path surrounding that. We've also created some planes here to do some cross-sectioning. For instance, if we were to click on this plane and select that plane and go to cross-section mode, we can then clearly see the interior of the flow path, which is really quite helpful. So I'm going to go back and go to th 3D mode. And then the other thing I'd like to point out here is under the, the groups area. That's where I, we create our name selections, which will be carried forward into Fluent Meshing and then into Fluent. We have our inlet on the bottom. We have our outlet. 
and then we have the walls, all the surrounding walls of the design. So with that, really, this is a very uh, pretty simple geometry. We're going to close out a space claim now and then move over to the fluent meshing. So for fluent meshing, we just double click on the mesh component, which then it shows us starting here. We say we're opening the fluent launcher. We say start. And we open up fluent meshing. This is fluent meshing. Of course, this mesh has already been, been generated. Uh, we see the, the options here are um, uh, watertight geometry and then fault tolerant meshing. For this, of course, we're using watertight geometry. The steps here, we import our geometry. We add any sort of local mesh refinement, mesh sizing. We then create this surface mesh, mesh is what you see here. We describe our geometry. We say it consists only of fluid regions. Is there internal walls? In this case, there is between the, the different, between the inner region, the porous region, and the outer region. And, uh, and then we move on, we update our boundaries, we update our regions. We have three fluid regions. We add boundary layer, these are boundary layer elements. And the last step is then to create the volume mesh, which is shown here. So from here, we, we click on, we can click the switch to solution mode. This is fluent. We have a ribbon across the top, and also you can control your inputs using the outliner tree view on the left. Working our way down, we start off with models. We have a laminar flow solution, materials, we specified blood. We have a, a, a density of blood, just greater than that of water. We have a non-Newtonian. The blood varies from 3.5, this is centipoise, out to 56 centipoise. And that's really it's very simple to in include the non-Newtonian effects. We have our cell zones. We have three different cell zones, an inner, an outer, and the porous. The porous, we're going to zoom in on that one. For this one, we're going to, of course, there's blood. We have a porous zone, which we click here, toggle on porous zone, which opens up this panel. And from here, we define um, the, uh, it's a conical porous region that we have. We have, vis we have viscous, a linear viscous resistance in three directions, which is what we're applying. So once we define the porous zone, the other thing we'll do is add a source term. And the source term is, is actually created using a user-defined scalar. Um, and that user-defined scalar we're showing here, we edit that. We set that value to be equal to the density of the fluid. That's going to be used to determine our residence time. So once we set that up, we, uh, um, we do that for each of the fluid zones, and then we can determine residence time. And just to show you, define scalars, user-defined scalars, we have one. That's all you need to set that up, and then you, uh, um, it said in, in each region, you label that source term, and then in the blood definition, just to loop back, we have a user-defined diffusivity here. We edit that and put a very low value. That's the, the value of diffusivity divided by the density. Boundary conditions is, is next. We double-click on boundary conditions. They are listed for us here. We have an inlet. We're using a mass flow inlet. We have an outlet. It's a pressure outlet, we specify a constant pressure. We have interior surfaces between the different regions, and we have walls. With that done, we're really ready to, to run. I did include a, a couple of report definitions. Those are to determine the mass average outlet residence time and the outlet volume flow rate, just to monitor my solution as, as it progresses. Then we initialize the solution. After initializing, we run the calculation, and we're off to the races. For this solution, we're running along. This is our residuals versus iteration number. You see, this is a case where I restarted the solution from an earlier version, and we're running along. I'm also looking at my um, my mass average outlet residence time, which is really stabilizing out around four seconds. That's that seems appropriate. It's about where you expect based on the volume and, and the volumetric flow rate. And so we're running along and um, and converging. When we finish, we run out the number of iterations prescribed, says calculation complete, we say OK. These are streamlines released from the inlet, pulling up through the middle section, through the filter, and then back out through the outlet, colored by speed. It's a nice way to look at it, but I'm also going to open up CFD Post, another way to visualize our, our results. So we close out Affluent, we come back up, and we just double click on Results to open up the CFD Post component. This is CFD Post, where we can visualize the CFD results and get insight into how to improve our filter design. I'm showing velocity contours along a midline plane and an XZ plane in the middle of the filter. What we see is high velocity flow entering and swirling around in the center region. This suggests we should include a feature within the center region to slow down the incoming flow 
and guide it into the filter section. We also see high flow at the outlet corner. Including a larger radius at that corner would reduce the flow speed and remove the flow separation that you see downstream of that corner. Now I'd like to switch to dynamic viscosity. This helps us to visualize low flow, low shear regions which correspond to high viscosity regions. These regions are occurring within the porous region as expected, but also in the outer region. The low flow, low shear regions can be significantly reduced by tapering the outer case to have less fluid volume near the top, then increasing as we move downward towards the outlet. The goal would be to have more constant blood velocity throughout the outer region. Next I'd like to look at residence time. I'm going to scale this between 0 and 10 seconds. Residence time indicates how long the blood has been within the filter. This is an important value as the longer the blood resides in the filter, the more likely a blood clot is to form. The highest values occur along the walls of the outer region. Here again, reducing the fluid volume in the outer case will significantly reduce the residence time values and improve the overall washout of the filter. So in summary, what have we learned? What insight have we gained through this CFD study? We've seen high speed swirling flow entering the intersection which decreases the flow uniformity through the filter. There's significant recirculating flow within the inner region. Large areas in the outer region have high resonance times which indicates possible regions of flow stagnation. And when plotting the viscosity of blood, high values are seen in the outer region indicating low flow, low shear, and the potential for blood clotting. All of this points us in a direction for an improved filter design, which includes reducing the inner volume, which will reduce the flow recirculation and guide the blood flow towards the filter surface. Tapering the case of the outer region, which increases the flow volume as flow moves towards the outlet. The goal being to provide a constant fluid velocity throughout the outer region. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to work with me on improving the arterial filter design and I hope you found this demonstration helpful.